Hello and welcome to another PyQ tutorial here on the Mad Pony Interactive Channel. I'm very excited today to be the first to create a tutorial about Python plugins in QDesigner. We looked at custom widgets where you can add a widget that exists in your widget box, right click and promote to and add a custom widget, but as we've seen that's a bit limiting because uh, you only have a few base classes to select from. Plus, if I do any changes visually to my widget, I won't see them here. I'll just know that this is a promoted widget and, you know, I can't see the changes. With a plugin, it's, it's much more suitable if it's something that you're going to use in the future. You can have it here in the widget box, which is amazing. And you can do anything you want to do in the paint event and then bring it in and it will have those uh, settings visible to you and interactivity once you press a control R and you try to interact with it. You can even have your own custom groups here. As you can see, I got this Mad Pony group, Mad Pony widgets. And if you don't add a group, it will go into custom widgets. You can create containers like this container that I have here. As you can see, it has a layout and you can place things inside of that container. You can have extra options. Like you, you can see here, I have added something. And by right clicking you can pop up a box where you can further edit uh, your your widget and of course you have your own you can have your own properties for your widget down here uh, this is different from adding a property here because these are dynamic properties so we're going to look at how we can create this uh, the documentation is very lacking in this department so if you go to help and go about plugins you can see we already have some plugins that come with q designer like like q web engine and q x axis widget and here you got my plugins that i've been testing so i want to show you where i got this information from there's an example in the examples and we're going to check that out now in your site packages if you go into PySite 6 examples and you press and you look for designer there's only one example here and that's exactly what we're going to talk about this is how to create a plugin so if you want to check this out go for it uh, i had a quite a bit of a headache to make this work <laughs> so what i did is i, I created an app for MadQt, and it came out uh, in the MadQt version 27 alpha 27 well it's not really an app for say is more like more like a form and you can access it just like you access a uh, mad cute project manager i already created a shortcut here on my desktop and you can access the documentation by pressing the logo you got plugin creator here and uh well that's not much of documentation because i'm going to show what you what you can do with it with in this video uh, but there is a, a little helper here if you want to create package with multiple plugins so this is basically a form that is going to get us started, easily get us started in creating plugins. It's going to create a startup plugin, basically a template uh, with some information that we can pass in here, properties and all that. And um, as soon as it does that, we're going to go over the code and we're going to see uh, how you can do this by yourself, even without, uh, without this form here. One of the things this form does is add an environment path to your environment paths. In fact, if you used any version uh, of the MadQt package, pip package, over uh, version 25, I, I think, you will already have a path set up for QDesigner plugins. On Windows, if I go to my search menu and I look for env, you should get uh, environments variable. And then go into environment variables. And if you're using the MadQt pip package, you should already have a PySite designer plugins here. If not, you can press new and create a new one. If I double click on it, it's going to open up all my paths that I have for my plugins. I'm just going to remove some of these guys. Now, why is this important? This is important because you need to have your registry files in folders that are inside of this environment. The way this works is that Kit Designer, when it opens up, it's going to look at this environment variable and it's going to look at all the folders that are inside of this environment variable and then it's going to look for files that start with the word register. It's going to look inside those files and it's going to see which plugins are you trying to register and then it's going to check if those plugins don't have any errors and only then it's going to add them to the widget uh, box. So if you over any of these fields, it's going to give you a bit more information down here. 
of what is what. Uh, so for my class name, that's going to be my plugin name. So I'm going to call this the bird button. Then you got your Q and this class name, by, by the way, uh, it's going to show up here. And uh, for example, if I if I add these balls, which is from the example that is provided to us, and it's going to show up in here as well. And it's obviously how you're going to access it uh, because it works as a custom widget. Then you got the Qt class you were inheriting from, so you can inherit from Q widget or Q. Let's do the Q abstract button. Your geometry is how big is it going to start with, so it's going to be the size ends. So let's say uh, this is. Uh, you can see down here what is what. So this is the width, this is the height. Let's make it smaller in height. Then you got your your properties. You don't need to add any if you don't want to. I'm gonna add some properties now. Properties uh, for for the time being, uh, we only have four types uh, in the in the form. But I'll show you how you can add uh, add more properties. So we give a give it a name. Let's call this property Uvert. Check if it's Uvert, and it's probably one a, a boolean, and start with false, and say OK. And then you got your property here. You can right click to remove it, and you can right click here to add more properties. Your tooltip down here, uh, not to be confused with the tooltip of the widget here. OK. That tooltip is when you over the widget, you get that tooltip there or there, uh, actually here. So I'm going to say that this button can fly because it's a bird button. Now your icon, uh, it's the icon, if you don't pass in an icon, it will have the map pony icon. But the icon is basically these images here. And it will also pop up in here. So this is like the, the project manager, uh, any image, uh, PNG image that you select here or JPEG, it's going to turn that image into an ICO image. So if I go into my desktop and I select my bird here, now that's going to be my icon. Now the group is which group do I want my uh, widget to go into, my plugin to go into. So if I leave it as custom widgets, that's a default. Uh, it would go inside of custom widgets. I can select an existing group. For example, if I was doing a container, I could say containers and that would go inside here, okay? Or you can create your own new group. Let's call this group Rare Birds. Now, container is to, it's asking you if this is a container or not. Oh, really? <laughs> okay, so if I open up a container here, like, you know, a group box, that's a container. It, it basically, it means that it has a layout so I can right click and uh, and set a layout on it, okay? And uh, it has uh, and you can place things in there, like a push button. There you go. So if you want it to be a container, just press this and you're off to go. Now add menu. If I have a push button here, add menu, and I right click this push button here, it's going to add extra parameters to this menu, okay? So push button has changed text. And if I select that, it will um, let me edit that text. Same thing, if I double click, it lets me edit that text because this guy here was set as the default action for this widget inside a Qt Designer. We go through that when we look at the code once the plugin is created. To keep things simple, as we start, I'm not gonna add menu and I'm not gonna make this a container. Let's look at registry. Like I like I was talking about, Qt Designer is going to look for registry files in the in the paths in the plugin paths variable. So this is important because any folder that you add here is going to go into your paths. This is automatically going to do that for you. It's going to set that environment variable. You have add to existing here because if you like, you can add multiple plugins to just one registry file. Right now we don't have one yet. So I'm going to open up a folder. This goes into folder. If I add, add to existing, it would go into a file. And I have this uh, on the, my desktop. I have this my plugins text, test folder. And I have this here because I was registering into a file. So I want to delete this. And I'm going to select this is the folder where my plugin is going to go. So I press create plugin. 
and notice Okay, so these happen uh, really fast. I had to restart my computer because I changed my variables. I, I deleted them from the registry, as you've seen before. Uh, what usually happens is uh, when you're adding a new register, uh, when you're adding a new uh, path to the environment variable, the button will stay like this for a little, for a few seconds, and when the button comes down, it means it's done. I haven't done a progress bar yet. I will do it in future versions and add more properties here as well. But anyway, once I've done this, if I go into my environment variables now, you can see that now I have that uh, folder that I added here in my environment variables. And um, it will keep adding that, uh, so it will take a bit longer until I restart my computer and then it will be a lot faster. So if I navigate to that folder, you'll see that you have a few files here. Uh, because I didn't add a menu, uh, we don't have a register task menu but we would have if I read, added the menu. And I'll do that in, in the next uh, uh, little plugin that I create here. And we can see that we have our icon file, even though that was a PNG image. Uh, if we we'll open that up, there you go. There he is. A bit blurry because it's really small, but that won't matter once it's in there. So this first file that has exactly the same name as the class name, but only in lowercase because it's a, a pi file name. Uh, this is where, uh, where where the magic happens, where you can actually create your widget. So if I'm open it up, you can see there's some license here that you should add if you're distributing your app. And all it has is uh, it's importing everything here and you can further edit this just to import whatever you need. And what it created for us is just initializing that Q abstract button right here. And you can change your args as you wish. And here we have that um, property that we created uh, hoovered and you get the property value here and it's false like we said it and then it's creating this is another way of creating properties that I didn't talk about yet I showed you how to create properties in a different way with decorators uh, in the animation video uh, this is another way you can do it you can do uh, the value like this as a protected um, as a protected uh, property then you have your setter and you get her and down here you have uh, you set these as a property in this manner so it does all this for you and it also sets up your size hints if you remember we had the geometry here and we set 160 so it creates the size hints for us it also adds these and the execution uh, if you are in main so that you can right away uh, run this and obviously you're gonna get an error because Q abstract button needs a paint event as we've seen in the previous video but it's already in set for us and we can just start creating our paint event here and go from there I'm just gonna create a paint event and pass so that we don't have any errors this is where you would start creating um, your paint event and checking if your app works it's in this file also important to refer that when you compile your UI, it's going to try and import this plugin. So this plugin needs to be inside your project. Now, Matcute, Matcute Project Manager already does that for us, and we'll probably see that in a further in another in another video. But for now, this is the most important file is where you create your actual widget. Now, another file here is the plugin itself. So you can see I got my bird plugin. Let's open this one up. And you can see that in here I'm importing our uh, widget. I'm also importing some other stuff that we need for the plugin to work. Down here we got the DOM XML, which is basically the, the code that it's going to be injected to our UI file. And you can see there's our property there. We'll go through. Uh, we have to come here and add the properties, not just in in the in here like we we've seen adding properties like that but we'll have to add them into these XML file as well. And uh, you can actually have dynamic properties here. So if I add a new property here that it's not in uh, my plugin file, in my custom widget file, that property will be a dynamic property. Now down here is where we initialize the designer custom widget interface which is basically the, the plugin class and you can see that here we have uh, the widget we're returning it we're creating an instance of it and returning it here so with the args and quarks you can change that if you like we're returning the dom xml which is uh, this variable here with the uh, ui stuff uh, here's the group that uh, we set it to be 
the, the rare birds group. Here's our icon, uh, which uh, it's inside that folder. Here's the include file. And um, if you could actually import this from, um, I'm gonna show you in a second in an example that I have here. Import this from a site packages thing. Here's is saying that it's container or not, like we saw. Uh, the name of our um, plugin, tooltip, and that's it. So I won't see um, my new plugin here until I restart uh, Qt Designer. So let's do that. Okay, now we have our new plugin right there. Rare birds, bird button, and if I start a widget here, I can place my button in there. So I didn't do anything on the paint event, so nothing shows up here. But you can see there's my bird button, bird button here. So this last file that was creator, created is what uh, Qt Designer uses to register and uh, process the plugin, initialize the plugin. So let's open that one up. That we are importing the widget, we are importing the plugin, and then we are registering it down here. And there's a little message here that says set the PySide Designer plugins to point to this directory. Okay, so this is automatically done for you. You don't need to do this. I don't know why I left this in here. This is from the examples. You can see that our tooltip pops up in there when we go over it. And you can see that we, because Q abstract button inherits from Q widget, our widget has Q widget and from Q object as well, and Q object and all that stuff. It also has a Q abstract button stuff. And finally here, bird button, our property that we created, hoovered, that we can check or uncheck. Okay, let's now create a different one. And I'm going to call this one a bird button container. Actually, because it's a container, I'm going to call it a bird cage. That makes more sense. And this time I'm going to say, you know what, I want to... Um, I could have a queue frame or whatever, but let's do a queue widget widget and make this a bit bigger because it's a container tooltip we can say and we can send it to the same group here say that it's a container and this time we're gonna add menu and I'm gonna add to existing so I have to open this up and look for the register so when you add to existing you're looking for a register file so this is my register for the bird button. I'll, I'll do that and I'll create the plugin and notice that now we have the task menu and the task menu. Uh, first of all, let's look at register before we move on. And if I open the register, now you can see that we have extra imports and that's our bird cage that was added and we initialize our bird cage here as well. So you don't need to, every time you do more than one, you don't need to have it in the same register. You can have independent register files for different plugins. This, I'm just showing you this. So if you're doing a group that, you know, it's, it sits well together, you can do this instead. And in the documentation, you can see how you can start a group with its own name before you even start uh, creating uh, plugins. Now, if I open up the Birdcage plugin, we notice that we have an extra import here and it's importing Birchcage task menu factory from our task menu. And we also have this extra code down here to make our menu work. Well, this is, you don't have to worry about this. What you have to worry about is making that menu work. So you won't want to go into this menu, this task menu um, file. And in this task menu file, uh, we're importing everything we need to make it work. We're importing our bird cage uh, container. And in here, this is just uh, something to get you started. In the task menu itself, that inherits from task menu extension, this is going to be the extension for the menu inside of Qt Designer. And here we use uh, a queue action. So for every every uh, item that you want to add in the menu, you need a new queue action. Right here, I'm grabbing our bird cage uh, widget, but you can create an action, and then you can connect that action when it's triggered. You can connect it to a slot down here. Okay, create a slot and say what happens. So basically, what I'm doing here is that task actions so for every every action that you create 
you want to add it to this list okay so if I had another action action 2 I would do something like this so I would have to add a new queue action here uh, with its own name and I can connect to the same function if I like and I would have to add it to this list down here now here the preferred edit action means that when the widget is uh, when you add the widget and you double click on the widget it's going to return whatever action uh, is in here so set to edit action it's gonna pull out edit something not edit something too and here we got uh, our edit method slot that we're calling when uh, the actions get triggered so what I've done here I've I've put a little bit of text here for you guys uh, but before I move any further I want to see how, how my plugin is looking at the moment so let's restart cute cute designer and see what's happening okay so here we have our bird button in our bird cage and um, I'll create a widget here I'll add my bird cage in here so that I can place my bird button in there there you go my bird button in there with no <laughs> paint event so you can you can't really see it uh, so my bird cage if I right click now we got edit and edit something too okay and if I if I press one of these they both gonna go to the same place but double clicking is gonna trigger edit something it's gonna trigger the, this one because that's what we said as the preferred action and you can see that all I have here is a Q line input an OK button and a cancel button so where is that coming from well basically I am say I am grabbing the birdcage dialog and the birdcage dialog I'm placing in a uh, self birdcage which is our plugin so that I can do stuff to our plugin so basically th this is going to be um, what's there on, on, on Qt Designer this okay so I can access it and change parameter uh, properties on it and uh, this dialog there's another thing down here you don't need to worry about this you can actually forget about that and leave it there that dialog is up here and uh, when I call it it's gonna pop that window up that you just saw and here's my line edit that you were looking at I got a, a VBox layout here I'm placing that edit line edit in there and uh, and then I'm just adding two buttons to our dialog which is okay and cancel and then I'm saying that I'm connecting those buttons when it's accepted self accept because it's a queue dialog self reject the queue dialog and then I'm just adding that button box to my widget like my queue dialog widget so we have that queue line edit let's change this uh, so that we can edit our variable this hoovered value variable instead so I'm going to do a checkbox, initialize it with the word uh, hoovered. I'm going to say the parent is self, which is birdcage. And this is just a protected variable called hoover checkbox. So I can grab this variable down here on my edit function. And because we have our widget up here, I can grab that. And you can see that there's an example here already. I can grab that. And we know that E has that property. And I can set that property to whatever the dialog over checkbox state. So if it's checked or not. Okay, so now when I right click and uh, I press edit something or when I double click, nothing happens. <laughs> right, uh, so I paused the video and I went in a little um, debugging adventure here. Uh, <laughs> Uh, one of the things uh, about this is that you, you can't you don't have a, a command line that tells you what the error is so what I did here is um, I import logging which is Python and uh, I created the basic config file here and the file name is this file name so I created birdcage menu uh, just to check out what was going on and I give it an encoding of UTF-8 and level logging debug okay so with this I can at any time it's like printing uh, but instead of uh, when I call logging for example and in this case I'm using debug because that's what it is uh, and I call debug it's like a print but it's just gonna print to that file so I had uh, this problem and I'm logging trying to pop popping dialogue here because it wasn't popping and then I'm doing a try 
and I'm trying to pop the, the, the dialogue and if that doesn't happen I'm gonna catch the, the error type and the error down here okay so if this is useful for, for you uh, there you go so and with this with this done if I run now my application I mean if I open up Qt Designer and I try let's see what's going on bird cage I'll try that and now if I open that 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 log file we can see the the, the logging here it's trying to pop the popping the dialogue he has a name error and that name error is that Q checkbox it's not defined okay so if you run into problems uh, trying to debug stuff this is one way you can do it I'm sure there's a lot a lot better ways to do it I don't know about them I'm not a master I'm not a guru I keep telling you guys that but this is one way you can do it so we know that the Q checkbox is not defined yet yeah, I'm used to import everything as you guys know and I didn't import the Q checkbox I was importing the Q line edit so now I'm not using Q line edit I need a checkbox balls okay and now let's see if it works and sure enough now it works so now I got this hoovered thing here if I press it and say okay it should pop up the hoover there it didn't show up I'm gonna check out what's happening I, I believe I messed up here I, I used set hoovered here because I was trying other things here so let's grab our hoovered variable and set that to whatever the checkbox is set to okay so in this way I'm catching that is checked statement uh, uh, state and I'm passing it over. You can also do something like uh, create in here in the dialog, create your own Hoover state like this, where you return that, and this will basically get you cleaner code like this. So that's going to set the Hoover state based on whatever we did there. So if I open up here my, let me. You can see I have my Hoover, and if I come here and well I didn't do any checks to see if it was hoovered or not so um, it's still hoovered but not really <laughs> okay so you have to navigate away from it and then come back and see your properties change and that that happened because um, I am passing birdcage in there so with that I should be able to just grab the parent which is birdcage and set that property right away what I'm saying is I'm grabbing the parent which is the birdcage uh, plugin that we're passing down here okay and that's that right and that that is coming from here uh, and this is from the other um, file so I'm catching the parent uh, and down here as soon as my uh, checkbox pops up I'm setting its check state to be whatever the birdcage hoovered state is now because my widget is actually a container it will show up here in the custom widgets down here okay so let's create it as a as a widget and now if I right click and edit something uh, pressed over it pressed OK now the parameter doesn't change right away okay but if I, as soon as I click on anywhere on it uh, the parameter updates I don't know how to automatically to make the, that parameter update automatically if I find out I'll tell you so before we wrap up this video I'm just going to talk about how you can add more properties uh, besides the ones we already have on our form and y if you come here you can go into other and you can choose one of these properties not all properties here are available to us but you got properties like rectf and size f and stuff like that so if i for example i have the rectf here and say i'll just say my rect so we can easily identify it say my rect okay so now this is a rect that can be set uh, and it's set as a dynamic property i'm doing this so that if i save this then i open it up uh, so now we can see that uh, how our rectf is, is set up so rectf is a, a float uh, it's based on floats that's why we have these long numbers here they're floats and you can see how, it, how the property is set up so if I wanted to add a property like this I would I could open up the UI add it like that open up the UI go into my um, my plugin and then in here in my plugin I could paste that code and remove this we don't need this so if I just leave it as it is 
this would be a dynamic property every time I open up that plugin. So to make it uh, a property of the plugin itself, I would have to open up the, the widget and add that property in here as well. So let's do that. And it's important that we use the same name here for the property. So, so if I create my rect here and uh, it's a Q-Rect, so I can say a Q-Rect F and give it an empty Q-Rect, I can do that. And then uh, do the setter and the getter, just like that. Then one more thing is that down here, I got to do the same thing as my other properties and turn these into a variable type of Q-Rect. Now when I restart and add that form again, you can see that now I have my rect in here, not as a dynamic property, but as a property of it. Quickly going over imports, this header that we get here for our custom widget, it's where it's going to import from. So when we compile this UI, it's going to say uh, from birdcage import birdcage, this class, okay? So it's you either can put the um, compiled file in the same place where you're going to use your application or when you're doing your your plugin and here is the include file which refers to what we just saw we could if let's say i'm importing it from a, a python package like matcute i could do something like this if this was uh, available to us so let's say if you're planning on having your uh, module birdcage inside the widgets uh, folder named my widgets you'd have to say uh, something like something like this and then obviously you'd need to place this file uh, the widget file inside that folder so that your application can import it I think that's it for this video I think we covered everything um, I know I talked about making a Q abstract button and we'll I can do that in the next video with some animation and stuff so for now I'm going to leave you with this information and um, this is amazing, I mean you can create plugins for other people as well, not just yourself and if you want to participate in the MadQt project and create plugins for the MadQt platform, you're more than welcome to. I will create some of these plugins for the MadQt pip package and uh, when you install it, it will pop up in Qt Designer right away. For each one of those uh, plugins, I'll make a special video talking about it and how it was created. So that's it for this video uh, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Uh, we'll look at, uh, I want to go more over QPainter, check out some of its paint methods and go through uh, QPaint path because that's going, to, got, that's going to be important for when we get to the graphics framework. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this, have fun with this, create your own plugins, make, it, make them awesome and I'll see you in the next video.